how does this keep happening? And the answer is pretty much all of us, right? We're all sort of responsible for this happening. So Earth Week is here, and as auto enthusiasts, it's important for us to think about the planet that gives us these lush and lovely landscapes that we like to drive and enjoy, and the air that we like to breathe. Now everyone can agree we all care about the planet, but the caring usually stops for most when it comes time to put in any effort into doing anything for it. Well, that's where today's video sponsor, Fishing Clash, is here to change that, and you don't even have to get out of your seat. Fishing Clash is a free-to-play game that allows you to enjoy your favorite hobby of fishing from the comfort of your home, office, or anywhere you happen to be with your phone in tow. Fishing Clash has some of the most realistic graphics you've ever seen in a mobile game. Enjoy the scenery while you travel the world and fish in different locations, fishing from onshore or from a boat. It's competitive, relaxing, and fun, and you can upgrade your rods and lures to compete with other fishers in order to land the biggest fish. Best of all, it enables you to do your part and help out the planet. For Earth Week, there's a new in-game activation where the Amazon fishery won't be in its usual form. Through your in-game activity, you'll help with its rebirth by improving the state of the fishery. Based on your play, TSG will donate real money to Ecosia to support and combat against deforestation and the contamination of seas. So to help out Mother Earth, give Fishing Clash a try and you'll be helping the planet while entertaining yourself. To get off to a solid start, for new players, use my gift code FISHWITHROB to get a special reward worth 20 bucks. You'll get a three-star rod, one mythical lure, 50 luck power-ups, and 30 weight power-ups to help you catch bigger fish. To redeem your gift code, just follow these three simple steps. So if you haven't downloaded Fishing Clash yet, now's your chance. It's available on both Android and iPhone, so check them out. Now, let's check out some cars. All right, guys, I've been sitting on this one for a couple of days because I wanted to feel it out and see where it was going, but this is yet another dealer fraud that is coming to light. I smelled it the second I heard. And this started with one of my customers calling me up and asking what I did when my car essentially went missing. And, and when we had the whole uh, Emporio Motors, Bobby Kahn, uh, fraud claim, big mess of uh, dealership implosion uh, up in Ramsey. And as if you remember, I, I'm out a little over $300,000 on that one, and that was no fun. And there were lessons to be learned in that, and it appears that some people know, uh, judging from the news report. But here's what happened down at Excel Auto Group in Boca Raton, Florida. The Excel Auto Group showroom here in Boca Raton is mostly empty. The lights are off, and some car buyers have no idea where their cars are. Now, that was a quick recap from Boca News Now, and they initially broke the story, uh, I, but this was after I was already aware of it, and I'm like, I don't see anything online yet, and usually people are very vocal when their cars get stolen or go missing. And I was like, from what I've heard, file a lawsuit immediately. And this is what I told my customer, because I'm like, get in there, first money to, to, to claim, if possible, if not, you're screwed either way. Uh, look to your insurance company, look for other remedies, but same repeated thing over and over again. Another dealer fraud where uh, cars were sold either multiple times, uh, titles weren't delivered, payments weren't made, the, there was a big consignment mess. And this one all started when initially the guy didn't like disappear or run away. He just claimed when the showroom was cleaned out, that it was a dispute with his landlord, which I guess he did have a dispute with his landlord too, but any landlord would know you can't just go grab the inventory and be like, ah, I got all these cars. Because likely if he's not paying rent, that inventory belongs to a bank, uh, belongs to customers. It, you can't, it's not his car you're gonna go steal or, or take or, or repossess. And that didn't make a lot of sense anyway because going in and snagging a bunch of cars, how do you get access to the key box? How do they, like there, there's none of that made sense. So that didn't, that didn't add up. So I, I figured there was something significantly bigger here than landlord dispute, which is what Scott Zankel, who's the owner of Excel Auto Group, um, was trying to claim at the time. Sure enough, a couple of days later, yada, 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 bankruptcy filing. And the bad one, right? The Chapter 7 bankruptcy. That, that means like, there's no coming out of this one. 
we're done. Uh, we're not restructuring. This is just like, here's the assets, here's the liabilities. And what he put was, and this is also from Boca News, the bankruptcy filing reveals that there's between zero and $50,000 worth of assets, right? An asset is something that has a value. So that means cash in a bank account, desks, furniture, fixtures, automobiles they own. Anything like that is an asset. You have zero to 50,000. That means it's probably zero uh, or whatever, whatever the calculators are worth. And the liabilities were 10 to $50 million. That's big. Like that, that's much bigger than the Emporio um, issue that was eight years ago. But what do you do? Right? Like what, what happens in this situation? How does this keep happening? And the answer is pretty much all of us, right? We're all sort of responsible for this happening because one person wasn't screwed out of $10 million, right? It's not like the landlord rented it to him for 10 years, never collected the paycheck or never collected the rent check. This is a culmination of everyone trying to be nice. Now, how do you protect yourself in this situation, right? Because everybody's trying to be nice. Oh, they, they, I don't want to say anything wrong. The dealer got me good money. I'm going to just give him a lot of latitude because he's got a good reputation. He throws some cool parties. I'm going to give him a lot of latitude to pay me back. And then nobody's talking. Nobody's trying to badmouth the dealership. And then as soon as the first person speaks up, everyone's like, wait, wait, wait a second. And everyone panics and the whole thing collapses. Now, this is a situation... When you have a car and you're going to consign it, you got to be careful, right? You got to make sure you trust the dealership. The first thing you want to do to protect yourself is to go look on Yelp and Google reviews, right? And look at the recent reviews. And, and even I went back to be like, would I two weeks ago have bought a car from this dealership, right? And I went to look at the Google reviews. Great Google reviews, great Yelp reviews, right? Now, you can't look, obviously, within the last week after the, the news hits. Everybody's like, one star, one star, one star. You got to crap that out. That's, that's Monday morning quarterback. You want to look before that. Were there any smoke signals? Were there any reviews? Now, Yelp is my go-to because Yelp people, the like, first thing people want to do is run to Yelp to complain. And Yelp welcomes it. Yelp's like, come on in. Like, I'll get the businesses to become paid members of our Yelp. And then we'll like, help them filter some reviews so people don't see the bad ones but Yelp welcomes the negativity. Google reviews, a little bit more honest, uh, in my opinion, uh, and both Yelp and Google reviews, there was one or two uh, concerning ones, right? Like, hey, bought a car, guy was a scumbag, never called me back. Not, we disagreed, just like, I voiced a concern, they sold me a bad car, I was going to buy this car, but then it turned out it had fire damage, and I called the dealership, and they said, no, it didn't have fire damage. And I showed them proof it had fire damage. And then they told me it was sold already. Just like, you know, usual sketchy dealer things. So that's something you have to look for, right? Like if there's the, if a dealer has any sort of sketchiness to it, and there's always going to be disagreements, right? There's always going to be somebody who leaves a one-star review because he bought a BMW because he thought it was going to get him uh, ladies. It didn't get him ladies. So now he's like, screw that dealer. They said the, the women are going to be all over me when I buy a BMW. You got to read through some of those things, but stuff that looks like fraud, like I've been having trouble getting payments. I saw the one guy said, look, look, there was a lot of, the title took a really long time, but it could have been because of COVID and you're com coming up with excuses. COVID was a great time to defraud people, right? Because everything, chip shortage, this, 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 there's a hundred different COVID excuses for why somebody's not delivering or why somebody's not paying or why somebody's not open or whatever. COVID is just the default. Oh, sorry, I can't make that uh, hotel. Sorry, you're inside the cancellation period. Oh, uh, COVID. Oh, can't do anything about that. So COVID was the magic word, but that's coming to an end now. So if you see anything like that where somebody has trouble getting paid or anything like that, stay away. Now, the whole thing that's cool about consignment cars or the, the allegedly or with the way it's supposed to be is consignment cars are owned by you until the deal is closed, right? It's your car. Dealer just happens to be parking it there. He can't sell it without your permission, right? You can't, like, you have to tell him a price. He marks it up a little bit, or you say, you sell it for $100,000, I'll give you five. So he's got to sell a car for a minimum of $95,000 to pay you. Whatever he makes, he could sell it for one hundred and five. dollars whatever it is, it is. It's your car, your title, everything until the, the guy sells it. You may have to provide him a copy of the title. Um, you may, in some, certain states, even have to provide the title. If you do, go file a security interest and, and make the dealer sign it just to protect yourself before you do that. If you go, I think, um, 
Haggerty has something as to how to consign your classic car and minimize your risk. That's all stuff you want to look into. But you want to look into, if you're going to give somebody a car and the money is going to mean something to you, which it should because it's your money, whether it's $1,000 or $100,000, $500,000, nobody wants to be defrauded. So you go in and you, and you look up if there's any uh, lawsuits or judgments or anything against the dealership. That's like number one. Uh, second thing, you look for negative reviews. If it clears these hurdles, you're probably okay. I'm not going to say never give a car to a dealership for consignment because I've sold cars. It sucks. Like nobody likes selling cars. It's no fun to go out there and like have to deal with everybody. Oh, you know, I don't think it's worth this. I'm like, oh, I'll give you, oh, you want $150,000 for your wholesales, uh, 145. So it's not a bad price, but I'll give you 90 in cash today. Why would I do that? You just told me the wholesale is 145. I'm selling it for a fair price and you're offering me a third of what I want. That's common. It's very frustrating. And, and if you value your time and your mental sanity at any point in time, I suggest letting somebody else sell your cars. It's significantly easier. But at the end of the day, you want to avoid dealership scams like this. Now, this one is big because it's, it's a big money thing. And why, why I'm saying it's sort of all of our faults is because people tiptoeing around and not saying anything is what allows it to get to this level. There's no way it gets to 10 to $50 million. And I don't know how much it is. Initially, I heard like 30 to 40 and then 40 to 50. And then the, the filing has 10 to 50. I don't know where that money is due. But this dealership had, if you look at the photos online, they had Pagani's, they had LaFerrari's, they had 918's. I mean, there was every indication that this business was, was doing pretty good. Uh, but you can see, as I said, a lot of people learned from previous dealings with dealers like uh, the Emporio and, and everything else where everybody's fighting over scraps. You could see the guys in these news reports, the one guy's like, yes, uh, I bought the car for $400,000. Then uh, I went in for service. And I purchased via uh, a salesperson at the dealership. It cost him almost $400,000 and he paid in full after the sale. Hall wanted the dealership's body shop to do some maintenance work, and that's when it disappeared. I'm working with detectives and um, trying to find out exactly where, where my car is. Like, these are the guys that are ending up on the news. That guy is doing what the guy who got my car said, went in for service. I don't know if he's got records that says it went in for service. I don't know if Excel does service. Could be very clean, but also, like, it's funny the guys that end up on the news. Another guy says, yeah, I dropped my car off for appraisal as to how much it was worth. And, uh, you know, fast forward, yada, yada, a couple of weeks. And he sold the car for $400,000 and I got nothing. But I never agreed to sell the car. Zakin dropped his car off at Excel Auto for an appraisal, never agreeing to a sale. On Monday, driving by, I saw the front of his dealership full of police cars. So I pulled in and realized that something went on and all the cars are missing and vanished. Including his Lamborghini, sold for around $400,000 without his permission, and he hasn't received a penny. Again, like, guy claims that, like, who, when you go for an appraisal, I mean, use your head. You bring your car in for an appraisal, it's a, it's a Lamborghini. You look at it, you appraise it, you, you can put a number on it on the spot. You can get an appraisal without even bringing the car to the dealership. So for this guy to be on the news claiming that he's out there and he just brought the car in for appraisal and a couple of weeks later, the car has been sold and gone and he didn't know about it, something doesn't add up there. So I think there's a lot of people dancing around the actual truth to try to protect themselves. Um, but also, if you're involved in a situation like this, get a lawyer. That's probably what these guys did. That's why they're putting their stories out there like that so they can be like, oh, look, I'm so innocent. Uh, and then they can try to recover money from either their insurance companies the dealer's insurance company, but they're not going to cover anything near that. And they may not cover anything in a situation of fraud. Um, but that there's, there's not a lot of recourse. Uh, somebody's going to have to eat it here because there's 10 to $50 million, but that's gone. Uh, you never want to watch the individual owners eat it. The banks are going to eat it. Every, everybody's going to eat. And uh, when I say eat piles of poop, yeah, it's not good. So uh, there you have it, Excel Auto Group. I, I saw the very first second somebody said it was going down and people were trying to stand up for the dealership saying it's a landlord dispute. I said, no, I was right. Uh, bankruptcy filing backs me up on that one. Uh, where the fraud is, where the money is, it's a lot of money to disappear, 
uh, and that's all on you guys. Uh, and when I say you guys, everybody, every one of us. If, something, if, you, if you're not getting paid from a dealership, be vocal about it immediately. Go tell everybody. Go put your review up. Hey, here's my review. One star. By the way, I'm going to modify my review to a four star. I, I let them know I wasn't being paid. They resolved my situation. It still happened, right? You didn't get paid to the point where you have to go get a review or you're concerned. Make that review so at least the public is aware. So when we go looking at a dealership, we're not compounding the problem. Um, and the way these are able to sneak under the radar and get so big and go for so long are a lot of people think by not saying anything, they're going to be in a better position. Get a lawyer as soon as you can and uh, let everybody know as soon as you can that something's going on. And maybe we can at least minimize the impact of fraudulent, uh, I guess, dealers or, or sales practices in the automotive world. Rob Ferretti, thank you for watching. Uh, you'll see the video about my hair coming up pretty soon, uh, but this is about 10 days out from my hair transplant from Keeps. Thanks for watching. See you then. If you haven't downloaded Fishing Class yet, now's your chance. It's available on both Android and iPhone, so check them out.